I'm now going to show you an example where the divergence theorem can be used to simplify a calculation. Our example is to calculate the double integral over s of f dot ds, where f is the vector field z, y, x, and s is the upper hemisphere of the unit sphere oriented upward. So let's first do this by direct calculation as a review of surface integrals. So for the direct calculation, we parameterize s as the graph of g of x, y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, where the domain is the unit disk in the plane. And then by the formula for a surface integral over a graph, the double integral over s of f dot ds is the double integral over the unit disk, let's call that d, of f, so this is zyx dot minus gx comma minus gy comma 1 dA. So this is the double integral over d. So now you have to plug in um, g of x, y for z here. So the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared comma y comma x dot and then what's minus gx? Well gx is a half times minus 2x divided by the square root of this thing. Um, so minus gx is going to give me x over the square root of the same thing. Minus gy is y over the square root of blah 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 and then 1. And when I expand this dot product I get the double integral over d. So now these two square roots cancel for the x term, so I get x plus y squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared plus x dA. Now the integral of x over the unit disk is 0 by symmetry, so I can cancel these because you know basically on one side of the disk x is positive, on the other side of the disk x is negative. If you do a change of variables where you replace x with minus x, then you'll find that the double integral of x over the disk is the same as the double integral of minus x over the disk, and so it has to be 0. Okay, so this is the double integral over d of y squared over the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, and I can rewrite this in polar coordinates as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, r goes from 0 to 1, and then y squared is r squared sine squared theta, but I need an extra r because of the magnification factor in polar coordinates. So if r cubed sine squared theta over the square root of 1 minus r squared dr d theta. Okay, so let's do this on the next page. Okay, so we need to evaluate this integral here. And to do the r integral first, I need to find an antiderivative of r cubed over the square root of 1 minus r squared. So let's play around a little bit. So let's look at d by dr of r squared, square root of 1 minus r squared. Then by the product rule, if I differentiate the square root of 1 minus r squared part, I get minus r cubed over square root of 1 minus r squared. So that's, this is what I'm looking for with the minus sign. And then the other term is 2r square root of 1 minus r squared. So now I need an antiderivative of this. But let's look at d dr of 1 minus r squared to the 3 halves. Well, this is minus 3r square root of 1 minus r squared. So I can combine these. I can look at d by dr. Let's first take minus this one. So minus r squared, square root of 1 minus r squared. That gives me what I want, but I have a minus 2 r square root of 1 minus r squared. To get rid of that, I subtract 2 thirds of 1 minus r squared to the 3 halves. And then this is what I want. Everything cancels. So that's basically integration by parts. Anyway, so we get that this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 
minus r squared, square root of 1 minus r squared, minus 2 thirds, 1 minus r squared to the 3 halves, sine squared theta, um, evaluated at r equals 1 and r equals 0, and then d theta. And this one, so r equals 1, this term vanishes, and this term vanishes also. r equals 0, this term vanishes still, and but this one is now non-zero. This, this one is now minus 2 thirds, but I'm subtracting it, so I get a plus 2 thirds. So this is 2 thirds integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine squared theta d theta. And you've probably done enough homework problems by now to remember that the integral sine squared theta from 0 to pi is equal to pi. So the final answer I get is 2 pi over 3. Okay, so that worked. But you want to see a clever shortcut? Sure you do. Okay, so we want to calculate the double integral over s of zyx dot ds, where s is the upper hemisphere of the unit sphere. oriented upward. Now, what made that integral tricky was the fact that s is a sphere. It would be so much easier if s were just the flat disk. So what if we look at s prime, where s prime is the flat disk, again oriented upward. So the double integral over s prime of zyx dot ds well, I have this flat disk, and I have the vector zyx evaluated. Now z is equal to 0, so this is 0yx. Um, and I dot this with the unit normal, which is 0, 0, 1. So we get the double integral over d2 of x dA, which is 0 by symmetry, as we noted before. Well, so what? I actually want the integral over s. But now look at this. What is the double integral over s minus the double integral over s prime? Well, by the divergence theorem, this is the triple integral over the upper half of the unit ball of the divergence of zyx dv. And why is that? So if you um, look at um, the double integral over s, the divergence theorem tells you nothing because this is, this is um, not the boundary of a solid region. But we could make it into the boundary of a solid region by adding the surface s prime. Now, to get the boundary of the solid region, I would need s prime to be oriented downward. Okay? So the triple integral over the upper half of the unit ball, let's call this E, is a double integral over s with the upward orientation plus the double integral over s prime with the downward orientation. But here I had s prime with the upward orientation, so I have to subtract it doesn't matter in this case because the double integral over s prime was 0. Okay, and now I can do this integral over the upper half of the unit ball. So this is the triple integral over e. And what's the divergence of this vector field? Well, it's d by dx of z plus d by dy of y plus d by dz of x. So it's 1. So this is the volume of e. So this is the half, the volume of the unit ball. This is 1 half of 4 pi over 3, and that's 2 pi over 3, which is the same answer we got before. So in conclusion, if you want to evaluate a surface integral over a surface without any boundary, which is the boundary of a solid region, then you can use the divergence theorem and evaluate, integrate the divergence over the interior. If your surface does have boundary, 
you can still use the divergence theorem to replace your surface by some other more convenient surface with the same boundary. And then the difference between those two surface integrals is the triple integral over the region in between the two surfaces.